We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of his mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. And we cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Well, good morning, Miss Kathy and Mel and Yolinda. Wonderful to see your names. Oh, you are part of my heart on this April 15th. Let's give that little tune a try again. I hope some of you even know it and you'll join in. We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of his mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. And we cry holy, holy, holy. We cry holy, holy, holy. We cry holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Can you picture that? Life is finished. We've entered heaven and we take some crowns he gives us. We don't even know how many or what, but we get them and we lay them at the feet of Jesus. Oh, what a glorious moment. What a way to start a day. For he is Lord, Miss Joy. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He will come again in glory, for he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are confessing it this morning, aren't we? On this April 15th, we will return and be re reading from Yehoshua, Joshua, chapter 11. Joshua, chapter 11 and part of 12, if you would like to find that. And I love how this starts out. So many times we read this in the Word of God. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. I mean, look at your past. And it came to pass. Good morning, Miss Maria. Nice to see you, sister. And all that we're going through right now, one day we will say, and it came to pass. But let's take on where Joshua is. He is in a tight battle this time. It came to pass when Jabin, king of Hazor, heard these things, that he sent to Jobab, king of Madon, to the king of Shimron, to the king of Achshab, Achshab, and to the kings who were from the north in the mountains, in the plain south of Chinnereth, in the lowland, and in the heights of Dor on the west, to the Canaanites in the east, and in the west, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Jebusite in the mountains, and the Hevite below Hermon in the land of Mizpah. Man, he called everybody he knew, right? So they went out. They and all their armies with them, as many people as the sand that is on the seashore in multitude. 
Oh my goodness. I mean, look down at the sand. Now, you do that, right? And you say, I wonder how many grains that is. And it's innumerable. We don't know how to count that high. So they went out, they and all their armies with them, as many people as the sand that is on the seashore in multitude, with very many horses and chariots. And when all these kings had met together, they came and camped together at the waters of Meram to fight against Israel. But the Lord, woo, there's the important part, but the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid because of them. For tomorrow, about this time, I will deliver all of them slain before Israel. What? The Lord's going to do the whole battle. I will deliver all of them slain before Israel. Good morning, Miss Donna and August. Hooray! August says he made it. He loves this song. Good. <laughs> I'm so glad you do. <clears throat> and Anne Marie is here. Oh, Anne Marie, welcome. <clears throat> well, for you all who just came, we are in Joshua 11, and we are gonna. I will reread six, Joshua 11, six. Okay, God says He's gonna do the whole battle. Listen to this. But the Lord said to Joshua, "Do not be afraid because of them, for tomorrow about this time I will deliver all of them slain." Before Israel, you shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua and all the people of war with him came against them suddenly by the waters of Merom, and they attacked them. And the Lord delivered into the hand of Israel, who defeated them and chased them to greater Sidon, to the book brook Misrapoth and to the valley of Mizpah eastward. They attacked them until they left none of them remaining. Can you imagine that battle? Maybe we get to see the replay one day, August. So Joshua did to them as the Lord had told him. He hamstrung their horses. Kind of hate to read that, but that's what the Lord said to do and burn their chariots with fire. Joshua turned back at that time and took Azor. I mean, he's still going on. And struck its king with the sword. For Hazor had formerly, that was formerly the head of all of those nations. And they struck all the people who were in it with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying them. There was none left breathing. And then he burned Hazor with fire. So all the cities of those kings and all their kings, Joshua took and struck with the edge of the sword. He utterly destroyed them as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded. So there we have the, re the refreshing reminder. Moses spoke all this way long ago. But as for the cities that stood on their mounds, Israel burned none of them except Hazor only, which Joshua burned. And all the spoil of these cities and the livestock, the children of Israel took as booty for themselves, but they struck every man with the edge of the sword until they had destroyed them and they left none breathing. <clears throat> As the Lord had commanded Moses his servant, so Moses, Moshe, commanded Joshua. And so Joshua did, praise God. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord had commanded Moses. Oh, Moses, brought him up well in the knowledge of all that was going to come in the future. Thus Joshua took all this land, the mountain country, 
all the south, all the land of Goshen, the lowland, and the Jordan plain, the mountains of Israel and its lowlands, from Mount Halak, and the ascent to Seir, even as far as Baal Gad, in the valley of Lebanon below Mount Hermon. He captured all their kings and struck them down and killed them. Joshua made war a long time with all those kings. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel except the Hevites, the inhabitants of Gibeon. All the others they took in battle, for it was of the Lord to harden their hearts. Okay, there's, there's the reason. It was of the Lord to harden their hearts, that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might utterly destroy them, and that they might receive no mercy, but that he might destroy them as the Lord had commanded Moses. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. As a people group, you don't want to get to where God says, that's it. I'm done. No mercy now. So let's listen up to this word, right? And learn and pray accordingly. <laughs> Miss Connie, good morning. Good morning to you, sister. And at that time, Joshua came and cut off the Anakim from the mountains, those giants from Hebron, from Debir, from Anab, from all the mountains of Judah, and from the mountains of Israel. Joshua utterly destroyed them with their cities. None of the Anakim were left in the land of the children of Israel. They remained only in Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashdod. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord had said to Moses, and Joshua gave it as an inheritance to Israel, according to their divisions by their tribes. Then the land rested from war. Oh my goodness, isn't that a welcome sentence? Then the land rested from war. And we move along to chapter 12 of Joshua. These are the kings of the land whom the children of Israel defeated in whose land they possessed on the other side of the Jordan toward the rising of the sun. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Oh, I just couldn't resist it, okay? Toward the rising of the sun, from the river Arnon to Mount Hermon, and all the eastern Jordan plain, one king was Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon and ruled half of Gilead, from Oriar, which is on the bank of the river Arnon, from the middle of that river, even as far as the river Jabbok, which is the border of the Ammonites, and the eastern Jordan plain, from the Sea of Chinaroth, as far as the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea, we call it the Dead Sea, the road to Beit Jeshemoth, and southward toward the slopes of Pisgah. The other king was Og, king of Ashen, and his territory, who was of the remnant of the giants, who dwelt at Ashtoreth and at Adarai, and reigned over Mount Hermon, over Salakach, over Bashan, as far as the border of the Gersherites and the Maakathites, and over half of Gilead, to the border of Sihon, king of Heshbon. And these, Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the children of Israel had conquered. <clears throat> and Moses, the servant of the Lord, had given it as a possession to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. And these are the kings of the country which Joshua and the children of Israel conquered on this side of the Jordan, 
on the west from Baal Gad in the vale in the valley of Lebanon as far as Mount Halak and the ascent to Seir, which Joshua gave to the tribes of Israel as a possession according to their divisions in the mountain country, in the lowlands, in the Jordan plain, in the slopes, in the wilderness, and in the south, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites, the king of Jericho, one, the king of Ai, which is beside Bethel, one, the king of Jerusalem, one, the king of Hebron, one, the king of Jarmuth, one, the king of Lashish, one, the king of Eglon, one, the king of Gezer, one, the king of Debir, one, the king of Gedar, one, the king of Hormoth, one, the king of Arad, one. Now let's rejoice. Every one of these was a tough battle, okay? And every one was won. But we're talking about O-N-E, one. The king of Libna, one. The king of Adalam, one. The king of Machazah, one. The king of Bethel, one. The king of Tapua, one. The king of Hepar, one. The king of Abek, one. I mean, do you believe all of these battles? Magnificent. The king of Lasharon, one. The king of Madan, one. The king of Hazor, one. The king of Shimron, Meron, one. The king of Akshab, one. The king of Tahanach, one. The king of Megiddo, one. The king of Keshesh, one. The king of Jachnim in Carmel, one. The king of Dor in the heights of Dor, one. The king of the people of Gilgal, one. The king of Tirzah, one. All the kings, 31, 31 kings. Oh my goodness. The people shook in their boots when they saw these tremendous victories. We moved right along to the new covenant. Oh, hallelujah. Luke 17, picking up with verse 11. Luke 17, 11. Now what happened as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Can you imagine living like that? I mean, we're getting a little bit of it. Stay six feet away from everybody. But they had to stay far away from people. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, good illustration of faith. We don't get it right all on the spot. Number one, we walk along, don't we? And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan that's amazing and so Jesus answered and said were there not ten cleansed but where are the nine were they not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner and he said to him arise Go your way. Your faith has made you well. Oh my. Let's embrace all that. I'm embracing it for myself today. I have this knee and this leg. The Lord made it. The Lord will heal it, right? 
It is healed from the cross. I pronounce it is finished over this. And I hope you pronounce it over anything that you have to give help. Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you within you. Then he said to his disciples, the day will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look here, or look over there. Do not go after them, or follow them. These are good lessons. A lot of this is going to come up. Try to draw us away. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day, until the day that Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed? In that day, he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife? She turned into a pillar of salt, didn't she? Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night, there will be two men in one bed. The one will be taken, and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together. The one will be taken, and the other left. Two men will be in the field. The one will be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? So he said to them, I get this answer. Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Whew. We move right along to Psalm 84. Psalm 84 a psalm of the sons of Korah given to the chief musician, and they struck up the instruments. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. Good morning, Miss Jeannie. We are reading Psalm 84, Miss Jeannie. I'm just on verse 2. 84.2. I'll read it again. I'm going to read it from the beginning, just for you. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, it even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out 
for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. Selah. Cut in the music. And Scott tells us some, they went to worship. And then they went back, picked it up. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage as they pass through the valley of Baca. They make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O oh, Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O oh God of Jacob. O oh God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and mercy, or grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O oh, Lord of hosts, and that has a beautiful tune to it. We could have sung that one, maybe another time. O oh, Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Oh, take in Kathy's graphics. They are so lovely. They are beautiful. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We wrap up today with Proverbs 13, 5 and 6. Proverbs Chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. A righteous man hates lying. Oh, isn't that true? But a wicked man is loathsome and comes to shame. Righteousness guards him whose way is blameless. But wickedness overflows the sinner. Wickedness overthrows the sinner. Notice that sentence. It is the wickedness he does that overthrows him. Mm -mm -mm. Father God, what a wonderful, wonderful portion of your word. We are so very grateful, Lord. We are grateful that you took care of us in the night. You got us up. The word of God is still in our hands, in our hearts, freedom to read it. Many on this earth do not have that freedom. They do not have it. Prisoners don't have it. We are grateful, Lord. We are so grateful for your blessings. We love you, precious Father Abba. We love you. Precious Jesus, all that we've celebrated that you did for us. You talk about overwhelming. That is overwhelming, Jesus. It's wonderfully overwhelming. And you sent us Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, our dear friend, our dear friend who lives in us, who guides and leads and sheds light and you're just there all the time. You will never leave us, never forsake us. You will take us through the times we are living in. And Lord, we pray for those who don't know you. These are the ones who are paralyzed with fear. These are the ones who have no strong thing to hang on to. Everything they grasp won't last. So, Lord, we're asking, please send Holy Spirit today. 
to knock on the hearts of many, soften the hearts that are hard, and as many as will come, Lord. Like the leper who had such gratitude, he returned. He left the others and returned and gave thanks. Father God, let many, many leave where they are and come into the body of Christ. Come into being born again with a brand new life, the perfect life you had all along for each one. Father God, we hold up Israel. We hold up the Jewish people, not only in Israel, but all across the earth. Father God, as they sink in all that they have celebrated of Passover and reciting once again the whole story of Egypt and your deliverance, oh, Father, wake them up. Open their eyes, open their ears, open their hearts for Yeshua HaMashiach. Open them, that they might see, they might hear, they might start their journey. Oh, precious Lord, we'd ask you to give exceptional wisdom to Bibi Netanyahu in these tough days for Israel. Tough, everything closed up. No tourists. Mm -mm -mm. And yet, Lord, I understand that they are laboring in those laboratories and they have come up with an, with something for this virus that people are 100% healed. Precious God, let that knowledge get out. Let them bring that forth. It, it all comes from you. It all comes from you. Precious God, I hold up America to you. And I hold up President Trump. And I'd ask, Lord, you would surround him with wisdom. I'd ask, Lord, that none of the supporters would, would get frustrated or turn away from him. You have put him there. He has taken us so far, miraculously, miraculously, to heights of great prosperity great business sense to know how to do it. He can do it again. Lord, show him your plan. Show him your timing to restart this economy. It's like a pilot flying a plane. He must land it. And it's, there's no good place to land it. But he's looking at the fuel, the fuel being our economy. And he knows he has to land the plane before the fuel runs out. Father God, show him, show him. Be with Mike Pence, be with all of the council of the White House and those who are righteous and have your wisdom. Oh, we trust in you, Lord. You are the one that has the master plan and you have the master plan for our lives. So we cast ourselves upon you. We believe, Lord, for great healing Great healing, Lord. I'd ask you to heal Tom, Lord. I'd ask you to heal him completely. I'd ask that you would heal our sister Janine. Lord, all those who have come today and will come later after the recording, heal them, precious Lord. Let your healing fresh from the cross, your precious blood just as potent it today as the day you shed it. Come upon all those who call out to you, who desperately need on you. Help those, Lord, who are just hanging on. They don't have much money left. They weren't prepared. Some work, 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 work just to make ends meet. Father God, I'd ask that there would be a great sharing from the people, I'd ask that many rich people, Lord, that you would put it on their hearts 
to share out, share out to ministries who will feed those who are hungry, who will help those, who will comfort those who have lost loved ones. Father God, please, please come and comfort all of the families who've lost loved ones due to this demonic virus, not only here, Lord, in America, but everywhere, everywhere. Cause them, Lord, to be able to pick up the pieces and go on with each day. So hard to do. But in you, we can do it. We can do it. So, Lord, I want to end rejoicing. I want to end rejoicing in you. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so, once again, just for you, just for you, he is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Have a great day, y'all. Love you so much. Bye-bye.